Let's start by describing Russell's teapot. Russell's teapot is a reference to a claim that there's a teapot floating around out in space that is too small to be observed. Therefore, no one can prove that it is there. Nor can it be proven that it is not there. In such instances, it is natural to claim the burden of proof fallacy. If the claim is to be believed, it is on the person making the claim to provide the proof. That which can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. If there is no foundation to the claim, or reason to believe in the claim, then why should anyone believe in the claim? Naysayers will say, oh, well that describes God and the Bible perfectly. But does it? Definitely no. Here, I'll show you the foundation of the Bible, starting in the very first verse of the Bible. Here is Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. This is a statement saying that at a time, there was, or is, a God, or even God's plural, if you acknowledge the Hebrew word Elohim as being a plural word. So that's our claim, but where is the foundation to that claim? How does that not qualify as Russell's teapot? Let's take a closer look. There are actually two parts to that sentence. Yeah, it is the Bible saying that there is a God, but it is saying God did something. It is saying God created the heaven and the earth. This is distinguishing itself from Russell's teapot because now we have evidence behind this claim that God exists. Sandcastles don't build themselves. And when we look around us, it is easy to see that everything is very, very organized. Our bodies and the way they work, plants and the way they work, and the way one system is dependent upon another system. It is all far more intricate and detailed than any sandcastle. So that's a start. And I don't think it's any mere coincidence that the Bible starts that way. Nor is it any mere coincidence that the entire first chapter of the Bible goes forth and highlights the different systems within our world, pointing out the organization of each of them. It is all foundational. You want evidence that God exists? Look at his handiwork. Shall the work say of him who made it, he made me not? Okay, so that is evidence for some kind of God or gods. How do we know that this is the creator God that the Hebrew Bible speaks of? Out of all of the different gods that different people have worshipped throughout history, what makes you think the Bible got it right? Well, the Bible goes on and says God went and did many other things. Naysayers love to claim that the Bible is a work of utter fiction. I don't claim it as a work of fiction. Want to know how the Bible is true? One of the big things that separates it from Russell's teapot is you can test it. For example, the Bible claims a place called Egypt exists. Do you acknowledge that a place called Egypt exists? If yes, then okay then. You acknowledge that a part of the Bible is true. Now we can move on. The Bible also claims that a place called Israel exists. Do you acknowledge that Israel exists? If yes, then okay. You agree that another part of the Bible is true. Even the most devout atheists should acknowledge that parts of the Bible are true. As I see it, finding faith or trust in the Bible is a matter of turning over these little strips of blue paper. You turn over one, and hey look! It's yellow. Let's turn over another one. Another yellow. Let's go again. The more of these that get turned over that turn out to be yellow, the more confident I am that the next one will turn out to be yellow as well. This is faith. And each of those strips of paper that have been turned over thus far that have turned out to be yellow, those represent knowledge. But not every strip of paper is exactly easy to just turn over as simple as that. Some questions are harder than others. So sometimes we have to move on and ask different questions, and then we discover, hey look, that one's yellow too. Now I'm extra confident that this final strip is going to be yellow as well. 
At no point does the Bible say that knowledge is impossible or that a person can't ever really know that God exists. While faith is important in the Bible, yes, when we test God and the Bible, that is when we're able to discover a foundation of knowledge. Though I definitely can't say that I have a perfect knowledge of all things, I can say that I have some knowledge concerning some things. If you want to know if God is there, or find out what he's like, try praying. Talk to him. His works never end, and his words never cease. Though God reveals himself in different ways, he does reveal himself. And sometimes he'll just reveal himself whether you want him to or not. I just think of Pharaoh in Egypt and how he continually stuck his finger into Pharaoh's business and said, hey, I am here and you need to shape up. God lives, not just lived. And he speaks, not just spoke. The most sure and solid foundation of the Bible is God himself. That we may all come to acknowledge him in all things is my prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. This has been another Gospel Insight. Thank you all for watching.